guys, it looked like this was headed to an early finish, but now the series is tied 2-2. So, Kenny, who are you making your captain tomorrow? You know, I, I want to get a lot of high-priced options in, Jesse, and I don't know if this is going to be too risque of a captain, but why not DeAndre Ayton? Uh, you know, here's a guy that's going to consi- is consistently gotten you, right, around 40 DK fantasy points. He did have that dip in game three, but going back home, you know, I think that there's a lot of upside here for DeAndre Ayton. He hasn't really given you a ton in the scoring department, at least in two of these games, and has still managed to put up great nights because of his incredible rebounding. 17 rebounds in game four, just absolutely ridiculous. This guy is massive for the Suns. He's given them big minutes. He was able to score 32 fantasy points in just 24 minutes in game three. Um, I, I just think that the production of this guy, the floor is going to be very high. And the price is absolutely right. I mean, you can get this guy in your captain spot at 12,000. You have plenty of roster flexibility with him. I think he's got 50 fantasy point upside here. He could be one of the top three players on the slate and he could be a no doubt, a no brainer captain. All right, Matt, we got Kenny going with Aiton for 12,000. Who are you putting in your captain spot? So I agree with basically everything Kenny just said. Uh, My concern is that I think DeAndre Ayton could be pretty popular as a captain choice because his price is actually a bit lower than it was earlier in the series. So I think Giannis will be really popular. I think Ayton will be really popular. Um, The price on Chris Middleton has come up a bit. Devin Booker's price is pretty high. So I think one of those two guys, uh, I have some concerns about Chris Paul's wrist that he banged up earlier in the series. And I feel like if Paul doesn't get back to playing the way we're used to seeing him, Booker could be the guy to take over again, like we saw last game. But even though Booker scored 40 points, I don't think a lot of people get to him as the captain because you have Aiton for much cheaper. And then you have Giannis, who just is a machine for fantasy scoring. So I feel like Booker still goes a bit overlooked, even though he's coming off the big game. So I'm looking to Booker or maybe Chris Middleton. Right, Matt. Well, if you got to choose a player to compliment your captain, so if you go with Book, like who are you taking with him? So Aiden was going to be my next guy, so I won't give too much more on him. I think he is a really, really safe choice in the utility spot. I think it's just he's playing tons of minutes, like Kenny said, and uh, the price is pretty reasonable. So I'm a big fan of DeAndre Aiden for this game. If I have to pick someone else, I think McCall Bridges has become a little more reasonable. Uh, in terms of his price, he was one of the best fantasy players a couple of games ago. I think that was game two has had two down games, but now his price has fallen. So I think a lot of people may gravitate towards Jay Crowder, who's coming off a couple big games. And I think Bridges may go a bit overlooked and his price at 6,800 is a little better than what it was at 7,600 for game four. So I think Bridges and Aiton kind of in that mid tier are the two guys I'm looking at. All right, Kenny, well, you saved a decent amount of cash putting DeAndre Aiden in your captain spot. So who are you pairing with him? Well, uh, I do want to, you know, there's there's obviously the obvious options, right? There's Devin Booker you're going to want to have in your lineup. I'm going to have Giannis in my lineup. But to the, to, to fit the, uh, the spirit of this question, because you probably want to pair two sons together, right? I don't really want to talk a lot about Devin Booker. I'm not thrilled about the prospects of rostering him. I probably will just out of necessity. I think he... He probably is one of those guys you have to get in your lineup because he's going to score 30 plus points. But I'm really excited to roster Jay Crowder at $7,400. It's a sentence I didn't expect to be saying about a week ago. I was very bearish on Jay Crowder's fantasy production, his fantasy contributions. But this guy, as we've been talking about all segment long about the minutes, right? Minutes are very big in the NBA finals because they're hard to come by. You got a guy coming off a game where he played almost 40 minutes. He was on the floor so much. He only hit three shots. They ended up being threes and still managed to score 41 fantasy points. He is just so important to the Suns team. They've been going with Crowder as their preferred wing over Bridges, over Cameron Johnson. Those latter two have been splitting minutes. Crowder's just been on the floor like the entire game. And you saw why. He gets those steals, right? He, he might miss a bad shot, but but then he makes up for it by creating a turnover on the other end. He, he you know, he sells those foul calls. He's going to probably draw a flagrant foul in game five. He just has to be on the floor for this team. You look at the rebounding. You look at the shot making that he's been able to showcase in this in this series. I think that there's actually very, very high upside here for $7,400. I think you're probably locked into 5X. I think that you could realistically expect 6x maybe even seven times your salary if he has a really good shooting night he's just so important to the suns i have to roster him all right well let's talk value here uh what's your favorite value play kenny you like your boy pat Connaughton here 
Uh, I do like Pat Connaughton a little bit, but I, I have to talk about someone that's a little bit cheaper than Pat Connaughton. Forty eight hundred dollars. Um, you know, he's a great, great option. But a little bit cheaper is Cam Johnson at four thousand. I just alluded to it. But Cam Johnson, you know, I, I look. I am a huge Mikael Bridges fan. I love Mikael Bridges. I think he's one of the most exciting young players that we have. Uh, I think he can really develop into a very, very important player in this league. But Cameron Johnson just seems to be taking his minutes right now. Thirty minutes in back-to-back games. I know you know game three is a little hard to read into because there was the blowout. But I, look. You know, he, he just seems to be trusted by Monty Williams right now. He was in the crunch time lineup with Jay Crowder, with with Booker, or with Cameron Payne when Booker was out. And he just was the consistent option, or he was the constant, rather. So I think that he's a really talented player. Um, they put him out there for defense, but he can knock down some threes. And I just think that with the minutes, you're, you know, I think that there's kind of high upside here with Cam Johnson. I But yes, I do also like playing Pat Connaughton at $4,800. All right, Matt, where are you going for value? So I, I think it's worth reiterating just how good of a play DeAndre Ayton is. He's not as cheap, so he's not your standard value play. But the big thing that happened in this series is that Dario Saric got injured in game one. And because of that, the Suns don't have a backup center. They tried Frank Kaminsky for a little while, but that didn't really work out. So DeAndre Ayton is actually the, the main guy, at least from the top three on each of these teams, that has seen a minutes increase in the finals. Because the Bucks' big three was playing a ton of minutes throughout the playoffs. Paul and Booker have been playing a lot of minutes at least the last few rounds. DeAndre Ayton is actually playing five or six more minutes per game in the finals, excluding the game where there was a blowout. But other than that, I mean, Ayton's playing 40 plus minutes. So to me, I, I don't really think there's a great value play. I think Cam Johnson is a little too cheap, but the guy who who's underpriced to the most significant extent, I think that is DeAndre Ayton, even though he's priced towards the higher tier. Yeah. Uh, Let's move on to who you're fading tonight, Matt. That wasn't the computer freezing. That was me. Just like, where are we in the script? Uh, So someone that you want just like no part of being in your lineup. So I mentioned it before. I'm not really that excited to play Giannis at captain because I think that will be a very, very popular strategy. And because of that, I'm also not looking to play guys like Jeff Teague and Torrey Craig, but specifically Jeff Teague. I just think there's so little upside for him. And I think because a lot of these other cheap guys have seen price increases from last game, I think uh, Craig got a little more expensive um, and Connaughton got a little more expensive. Cam Johnson got a little more expensive. Jeff Teague actually got cheaper. And if you want to play a bunch of the studs from this game, Jeff Teague is kind of the guy that gets minutes that you can throw in your lineup. But he's playing 10 minutes or so a game. And even if we saw foul trouble from, let's say, Middleton or Holiday, maybe that gets Teague a couple more minutes. But it's not like he's doing anything when he's on the court. It's just the other guys will take over. So if he's a chalk value play, um, or at least a quote-unquote value play, as some people might think, I, I don't want any part of that. And if you're not playing Giannis at captain, you don't really need him anyway. So I'm steering clear of this price range for the most part. But I think Teague is the guy that I most want to avoid. All right, Kenny, how about you? Someone that you're just like not about having in your lineup. Yeah, you know, it's really sad because I sung his praises before the finals. I thought he was going to have a great series. He was really big against the Nets, but it drew holiday. It's just been really, really awful. And again, you know, you, you know by now, by watching these streams, I'm not one to go with the public. I'm not one to, you know, pile on people when they're down and, um, you know, go with the consensus opinion but I have to right now with Drew Holiday. It's been that bad. He shot thir- 27% from three, 33% from the field. And game after game, this guy, he's seeing over 40 minutes and he consistently disappoints. 13 points on four of 20 shooting in game four. Now you're going on the road in Phoenix. And it's not like he's missing jumpers. He's missing layups. Uh, we've seen the memes comparing him to Eric Bledsoe. I can't get excited about rostering Drew Holiday. And the fact that he's $9,600, as the fourth highest priced option, this guy's more expensive than DeAndre Ayton right now. Yeah, like, okay, the ceiling, we know what the ceiling is. He could have a 65 DK fantasy point night. He could also have a 30 fantasy point night. And then you're stuck with a guy at $9,600 who got you 30 points. I, I can't do it. I can't roster Drew Holiday. My spirit has been broken with this man. Yeah, you hate to see it. Uh, all right, Matt, are there any trends on the sportsbook side of things you've noticed heading into this game? Like, where's the most money coming in? Yeah, so just to give a quick recap of the series and where the public's been betting, it's been pretty evenly split for all the games, except for game two, where I think everyone kind of 
went towards the Suns after they played so well in game one. And then we, we saw it go back to an even, even breakdown on the betting splits and handle for games three and four. Um, but even though the Suns didn't look that great in games three and four, betters are back to Phoenix for game five. And I guess it's just they're going back home and a lot of people seem to be expecting that they'll get it together and play really well in game five. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but there's definitely a clear trend where betters like the Suns a lot more for this game than they did in previous games. So Matt's not sure how he feels about it, but Kenny, do you agree with how the people are betting you back in the Suns? Uh, I mean, I, I did say that the Suns are going to win, but I, I don't like the public just swaying, you know, with home court advantage. I, I think it's pretty dumb. I think that we've seen throughout the postseason that it, it's not really, um, you know, that big of a deal. I think that it's, it, you know, just because the Suns are going home, look at the issues. You know, Matt mentioned Chris Paul's wrist. He mentioned that, you know, the inability of him to shoot the ball. Um, he, he was a turnover machine in game four. I do think that the Suns are ultimately just the better team. But I, I, I don't like these trends of the public essentially just hopping on the home team every time. And, and I think that there's very, very real concerns here for the Phoenix Suns. The Milwaukee Bucks could take control of this series and win it in six. 